Running a highly successful company means making tough decisions. And while it's certainly possible to operate in a way that creates a warm and friendly work environment, certain leaders have earned a reputation for having a cutthroat and ruthless management style. From questionable ethics to extreme micromanagement, these are 15 ruthless CEOs. Number 15, Steve Ballmer. After being hired by Bill Gates in 1980, Steve Ballmer soon rose through the ranks of Microsoft to become president of the company in 1998 and replace Gates as CEO in 2000, a role he would keep for 14 years. This would become a difficult period for the company, which became regarded as being too arrogant in its dominant position and too slow in adopting new technologies. Ballmer was famously said that the iPhone would be a complete failure and that tablet computing would never take off. And it was his resistance to these ideas that have arguably put Microsoft on the back foot ever since. He did, however, oversee substantial increases in the company's revenue, from $25 to $70 billion per year, and the launch of the Xbox gaming division, as well as a data services division. But this success came at a cost. His management style was often described as one of fear, while his public persona was one of heightened energy and excitement. His behavior behind the boardroom doors was the complete opposite. He was reportedly uninterested in new ideas unless a substantive business case could be presented, and he was said by many former employees to have a worrying anger problem. He once apparently said he wanted to, quote, kill Google in response to the search engine's prominent rise to the detriment of Microsoft's Bing. And when one employee announced his intention to leave the company, Ballmer's response was to launch a chair across the room at him. This Number 14, Martin Shkreli. There's no doubt that a CEO's primary job is to improve the profits of the company for the benefit of shareholders. But there are some industries where there's a fine balance between making money and taking advantage of your customers, especially in healthcare. Martin Shkreli, often known as Pharma Bro, made a series of decisions that were so ruthless that he ended up being questioned by Congress and was sentenced to seven years in federal prison. He began as an analyst for an investment bank where he made several massive trades that, while they seemed suspicious, no one could find any evidence of wrongdoing. This put him into a position where he was able to start his own hedge fund, which made some equally questionable trades. But it was in 2011 when he founded a company called Retrofin that would invest in biotechnology that he found a way to make his fortune. He bought the patents of two drugs, Tioprenin and Kenadol, which are vital to the management of certain rare diseases, and immediately raised their prices by around 2,000%. The shareholders, investors, and executive at the company ultimately ejected him from the company for other reasons, while keeping the prices the same following his departure. And this led to him setting up a new corporation called Turing Pharmaceuticals, for which he would become the most famous. It was there that he bought the rights to a drug that had been developed in the 50s that was used as an antiparasitic and anti-malarial treatment and straightaway increased the price from $13 per pill to $750 per pill, purely to extract as much profit from the medicinal insurers and ultimately patients as possible. It was because of this that he was hauled in front of Congress and his heightened profile uncovered a number of other questionable business practices, many of which operated like a Ponzi scheme which led to him being convicted. Number 13, Marissa Mayer. Marissa Mayer was the 20th employee to be hired at Google, a position she was offered straight out of university. And thanks to her meticulous attention to detail, she soon found herself leading teams of engineers, becoming a product manager, and then a director of web products. She was central to the development of AdWords and for the introduction of an idea that found new talent to work at the company. And it was perhaps no surprise when in 2012, she was announced as the CEO of one of Google's biggest competitors at the time, Yahoo. During her tenure in her new role, she became renowned for treating and analyzing staff members in the same way as products. She insisted that all remote working positions should be turned into office-based roles and even introduced a system whereby all managers had to assess their staff and place them into a bell curve, which resulted in all those at the lower end of the rankings being terminated. Sure, she was facing plummeting sales at Yahoo and part of her responsibility was to make the tough decisions to turn the company around. But what resulted from her style of management was an increasingly anxious workforce and ultimately her efforts failed. By the time she left in 2017, over 50% of the staff had left the company, and the website's total monthly visits had halved as well. Number 12, Mark Pincus. 
Mark Pincus was the visionary behind the mobile gaming company called Zynga, which he founded in 2007. Leveraging social media networks, he developed a series of incredibly successful games such as Farmville and Words with Friends, with each boasting many millions of users within just a few weeks of launch. The company went public with a $1 billion IPO just four years later, and Pincus won a number of titles for being the technology CEO of the year. But behind all of this success was a darker side. There's no denying that to build such a valuable company so quickly requires a huge amount of dedication. But former employees have described Pincus as being next level. Said to have been driven to the point of being a madman, he obsessively tracked every metric he possibly could, including performance analytics of every staff member, and used these to set extraordinarily tough deadlines that he expected everyone to meet. This reportedly led to a culture of fear within the company, where nothing was good enough for the CEO, with accounts of unpaid overtime being regularly needed to even have a chance of completing what was needed on time, with no appreciation for the work at all. With employee burnout becoming common within Zynga, he took a year away from the company in 2014 before finally resigning as CEO in 2017, after which he set up an investment firm, which he runs to this day, and is said to be equally as demanding of everyone who's involved. Number 11. Kevin O'Leary The self-proclaimed Mr. Wonderful Kevin O'Leary is a Canadian businessman who made his fortune in the 1980s with the company he founded called SoftKey Software Products. Specializing in educational software, they didn't actually develop many new products in-house and instead built up the portfolio by a ruthless campaign of acquiring their closest competitors. In 1999, the company itself was sold to Mattel. The new management fired O'Leary soon after because his style was so incompatible with theirs and led to significant losses and lawsuits from investors. Since then, he's gone on to become a media personality, starring in shows like Shark Tank, and he's made a career out of being notoriously cutthroat. It's something he revels in, and he has no shame in it being part of his public persona, often encouraging new entrepreneurs to take the same approach. He once famously said that you have to be willing to fire your own mom to succeed, and that the blood you put into business is in many ways thicker than the blood of family. All you have to do is just watch how he interrogates entrepreneurs on Shark Tank to know just how ruthless he can be. And while he certainly has valid points to make, there are many that believe you can achieve the same outcome and success without being as vicious as he often is. Number 10. Tillman Fertitta Tillman Fertitta was described by Forbes in 2018 as being the world's richest restaurateur with an estimated net worth of $4.5 billion. And he's currently the owner and CEO of Landry's Incorporated, as well as the owner of the Houston Rockets. Originally in the 80s, he ran a construction business, but also became a partner in a Houston-based seafood restaurant, which ignited his passion for the industry. After opening a second venue, then pushing out his co-investors to become the sole owner of both locations, he took more investment and used this to acquire larger and larger competitors, such as Morton's and the Rainforest Cafe. He's had a hand in everything to do with each brand, and once a new chain has been brought into his organization, he drastically cuts costs to extract as much profit as possible. He doesn't believe hospitality is all about the food like others, and the first thing he often does is to fire the incoming executives, close struggling locations, and move the remaining leadership groups to his headquarters in Houston. So in his words, he can keep an eye on them. He once said that, when we buy somebody, we cut the head off, and was proud to have been once described as a, quote, brash, arrogant, bargain basement, bottom feeding acquisition nemesis. Number 9. Martha Stewart one of Martha Stewart's first jobs was as a stockbroker in the 1960s, and it was this commercial lesson that she learned from her father that would stick with her throughout her career and enable her to become an incredibly successful businesswoman. In the mid-1970s, she co-founded a catering business, but her partner apparently found Stewart so difficult to work with that they left, leaving her with full ownership. With her in the leading role, the company began to thrive, and she became a celebrity in her own right after publishing her first cookbook in 1982. Over the next few years, countless further books were released under her name, and her empire continued to flourish, along with a burgeoning television career. Her public image was carefully cultivated to be family-centric, positive, and friendly, but those who work with her on a daily basis saw the true Martha Stewart. She's obsessive to the point of distraction, and became known for sacking people for the most minor of mistakes, and is very reluctant to share control with anyone, famously removing two CEOs from one of her companies in just 12 months. 
It was her attitude toward people that would ultimately become her downfall, however. During the investigation into her supposed insider trading in the early 2000s, the testimony by a broker's assistant at Merrill Lynch, who she reportedly had been particularly cruel to in the previous years, is what ultimately led to her conviction. Number 8. Rupert Murdoch Rupert Murdoch is one of the most powerful and influential media tycoons in the world, and it's an industry that's notorious for being one of the most cutthroat of all. He began in the 1950s after taking over a small Australian newspaper following the death of his father, and used this as the launchpad to take over a number of other publications in the country, before moving to the UK and doing the same there. In the mid-1970s, he had moved to America with dreams of building a multimedia company, and was so dedicated to this goal that he renounced his Australian citizenship to become a US citizen to satisfy the country's television ownership requirements. The billionaire's route to the top has, however, been plagued with controversy. And while the individual acts that his companies have been accused of haven't been directly linked with him, it's his ruthless and relentless quest for domination that created corporate environments that allow it to happen. In the UK, for example, his newspapers became embroiled in accusations of hacking the voicemails of celebrities, politicians, and even the families of murder victims to gain access to stories before the competition. And in the US, he's become increasingly involved in politics, particularly with the creation of Fox News. This is a man who has no problem trampling over whomever it takes to get the deal done, and is arguably the most ruthless media tycoon the world has ever seen. Number 7. Scott Rudin The entertainment industry is notoriously unforgiving with new employees, in particular being subjected to the whims of those in charge, but there was perhaps no one as ruthless in the way he ran things as Scott Rudin. As a producer for film, television, and theater, he was involved in a number of huge productions in recent decades, including School of Rock, Zoolander, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and The Book of Mormon. But after having won countless awards and becoming a hugely influential figure in the industry, reports began to emerge of his abusive management style. He, for example, reportedly went through as many as 250 assistants in just five years, having sacked people for trivial things such as being a few minutes late producing a chart that wasn't perfectly clear, or even using the wrong font in a document. He was renowned for throwing objects at employees who had annoyed him, and was accused of smashing a competitor's monitor on someone's hand, and directed such a torrent of abuse towards one of his staff members that it led, in part, to their eventual suicide. In an effort to stamp out this type of behavior, Rudin was forced to step back from his responsibilities when these stories became public in early 2021. And while this was seen as a victory for improving working conditions, it's more than likely there are many more people like Rudin that are yet to be exposed. Number 6. Jamie Dimon Jamie Dimon is one of the most successful bankers in the United States, having risen through the ranks to become the chairman and CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, the largest bank in America in 2005. Believed to be worth around $2 billion, he's one of the very few bankers to become a billionaire and has regularly been called one of the world's 100 most influential people by Time magazine. As you could imagine though, running one of the biggest banks on earth involves some rather dubious decision making, and Diamond has been accused of misleading authorities during investigations into wrongdoing on a few occasions. He's also notorious for particular aspects of his management style, which include being a terrible listener, often cutting people off or finishing their sentences and subjecting his analysts to hours of interrogation-style meetings to fully understand the numbers and risks involved before making investment decisions. While his public persona may be, as the New York Times calls him, America's least hated banker, there's a large number of people who have had close dealings with him that paint a very different picture of their experiences. Number 5. Steve Jobs He's often cited as one of the greatest visionaries of recent times, but the man who turned Apple into a world-leading technology company was also famously difficult to work alongside, something that not only brought out the best of his people, but also drove them to the brink of burnout. Steve Jobs co-founded Apple with Steve Wozniak in 1976, with the aim to sell a personal computer that Wozniak had developed. And it was the following year with the development of their second computer that they found success. He was, however, forced to leave Apple in 1986 after an ego clash with the company's then CEO and went on to revolutionize the Hollywood visual effects industry by founding Pixar that year. Returning to Apple in 1997, he took the company to new heights with the introduction of the iPod, iPhone, and many more technological innovations. He also brought his own brand of ruthlessness back into the company 
and the extent of how far this went only started to become clear following his death. In emails that were subsequently released, he reportedly purposefully hired engineers to slow down the progress being made by a developer who had spoken out against Apple's anti-competitive behavior, and seemingly had a vengeful streak that was directed towards anyone who didn't act exactly how he wanted them to. Famously, when at Pixar, he decided on a whim to terminate the employment of a number of people, and when the question of them getting two weeks' notice of this decision came up, he simply said, okay, but the notice is retroactive from two weeks ago. Number 4. Robert Pittman Robert Pittman is arguably one of the most influential media executives of all time, having been one of the leading figures behind the creation of MTV in the early 1980s and helping to grow AOL during its most successful period. He also turned his hand to numerous other ventures, including becoming the CEO of Six Flags Theme Park, Time Warner Enterprises, and iHeartMedia. But while he's been incredibly successful, his notoriously abrasive management style, which has resulted in an unusual level of staff turnover where he's worked, hasn't exactly gone down well everywhere. Most famously, he was running AOL when it was involved in a merger with Time Warner, but the new board was unwilling to take such a risk on his behavior. From the fear of endless litigation from unhappy staff members because of the way he treated them, they removed him from his position soon after the merger was completed and instead replaced him with someone that they believed was a much safer and far less risky pair of hands. Number 3. Henry Frick Henry Clay Frick was one of America's most prolific businessmen in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, and he was also famous for how ruthless he was towards anyone that stood in his way, something that led to several attempts on his life. He was a millionaire by the age of 30, having taken control of 80% of the supply of coke in Pennsylvania which was vital for the production of steel, and he then worked with Andrew Carnegie to make the Carnegie Steel Company the largest manufacturer of steel in the world. Despite this, he wasn't happy with the level of profits the company was generating, so in 1892 announced that he was slashing the wages being paid to everyone that worked at the main processing plant in Homestead. The workers' unions refused to accept this cut, but rather than entering negotiations, he simply hired 300 agents to secure the site and lock out all of the union workers something that led to violent confrontations at the gates and the death of 16 people. Following this event, Frick found himself in the firing line when a Russian called Alexander Berkman broke into his office and fired three shots at him. Two hit Frick's neck, and in the ensuing chaos, he was also stabbed in the leg, but miraculously survived. This attack turned the negative public perception of Frick around, and the Union revolt was eventually quashed. But this doesn't detract from the fact that he was incredibly ruthless, and would have done anything it takes to get his own way. Number 2. Larry Ellison As the co-founder of Oracle, Larry Ellison has, with an estimated fortune of $93 billion, become the 10th wealthiest person in the world. But the story of how he got there is littered with ruthless maneuvers that led one commentator to refer to him as the modern-day Genghis Khan. To ensure his company rose to the top, he employed tactics that would either burn the competition to the ground or give them no choice but to succumb to a takeover attempt. He famously hired private detectives to look into the lives of his biggest business rivals, as well as his former partners, to ensure that he had all the information he needed to twist their arms when he needed to. One of the most notorious examples of this was in the early 2000s when he decided to acquire a company called PeopleSoft. At first, Oracle attempted a hostile takeover with an offer of $13 billion, but when this was refused by the board, a different approach was pursued. They dropped their offer to around $10 billion alongside the announcement that they would fire more than 5,000 people of the staff and regular insults directed at the company's CEO, which caused PeopleSoft's stock price to plummet and eventually meant the board had no choice but to sell. Number 1. Jonathan Ornstein Jonathan Ornstein is the CEO of Mesa Air Group, which is an airline company based in Nevada that provides short-distance flights under the banners of other operators such as American Airlines and United Airlines. With more than 145 aircraft, they oversee at least 610 departures per day in normal situations and fly all over the United States and the Caribbean. He led Mesa Air Group to be a surprising success, but he's also notorious for having one of the most volatile and ruthless management styles of all. In an interview, one of his former assistants went on the record as saying she have to actively monitor his mood so she's able to warn other executives of the times that they should stay clear of him. 
and that, in her opinion, he was unapproachable because of his temper about 60% of the time. The other airlines he works with are all too familiar with this too, with the president of US Airways once saying that he was, quote, loud, volatile, insulting, and doesn't listen to the other perspective. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.